seminary, we had uh, three deaf classmates who were the first deaf um, priests ordained. One is in Boston, my friend Father Sean, and um, it was a gift because years ago they would have thought um, being hearing impaired and stuff was an impediment to ordination. So we had an interpreter with us in all our classes. I'm pretty rusty on my sign language right now, but I also know that Michael's going to make my homily look a lot better than it sounds, right? <laughs> How does, that, how does that sign that way, Michael? How do you make it look better than I know you do? <laughs> what a, a beautiful interpretation of Scripture today when we think about this. When Naaman went and proclaimed that the Lord is the God of Israel, the one, he is the one God, right? The one God. But when we fast forward to the gospel and Jesus reflects on the ten, Nine, obviously, were part of the, the chosen race, the royal priesthood, or the covenant of people, children of the covenant. But yet, knowing that we had the one God, only the foreigner, the Samaritan, came back and did what? And praised God and glorified God for the beautiful miracle. And when we think about this gospel, we have to understand it in the context of uh, maybe in the, in the ancient world, I would say, is that usually if there was a medical condition that we know today or is leprosy, that it is a medical situation. Um, but back then they didn't know that. They would have thought that if somebody had some medical condition or disease or, or a kind of um, uh, uh, situation where it would, they would be outcast from society in a sense, they related that to a personal sin. They related that to a personal sin, that because we had leprosy, it must have been something in a personal sin that you did. So that's why they were, not just because of how contagious it was, but they were, they were put aside. They were put aside and they were cast out for that reason. Think about that. Think about what we've just lived through in the last couple of years. Think about the pandemic, the six foot distance that we all had to have between each other. The washing and cleansing of, of our hands constantly and purifying. The wearing a mask. Yes, rightly so. We needed to help protect and, 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 and do the right thing to protect ourselves and others, not knowing what this was all about. But look where we are today, two years ago. But it wasn't so long ago where that if we went in the market or somebody and you, and you forgot to put your mask on, that maybe you were outcast because you didn't have your mask on. Or the, the, vice, the other is true too, that if you were wearing masks, oh no, it's, it's, it's just a virus, right? If we start thinking about that, it really made us anxious as a society, did, didn't it? It really made us anxious about everything. And it did one thing that we should never do, we weren't anticipating and thinking of our neighbor. We weren't living our baptismal call. No matter where we were on it, the science or whatever, whatever it was, how, how we felt about it, what was most important that we would work together as a community. But even more so when we look at our baptismal call of loving God and loving our neighbor, right? That is our baptismal call. Were there times where maybe we weren't loving God and loving our neighbor? Maybe we were judging or we still do that today. There are a lot of things that separate us from the love of God. And separating ourselves from the love of God also separates us from one another, doesn't it? Because when we come to reconciliation or we come and receive the sacraments of God, especially reconciliation, we really are, are being redeemed and justified in a sense that we're putting ourselves back in right relationship with God. When we're back in right relationship with God, we are now in right relationship with one another. And then we can do the things like anticipating the needs of our others. You know, but here we have a story of nine that were ingracious. They didn't show their gratitude, right? They didn't come back and thank the Lord. You know, we always run to the Lord when we need something, isn't it true? When we're in a situation, we want something, we always run to the Lord. But when we receive the gifts, I always say God answers our prayers in three ways. In three ways. God's going to answer our prayers, yes, no, or not now. Or not now. But we do something, we are drawn into prayer because we want to have what? God walk with us side by side regardless of the situation. You know, we have a lot of trials and tribulations that are forced upon us or things that we do ourselves. I call them, we put, the own, we put our own orange cones in the way of our relationship with God. We live in a city where we're constantly 
going around the orange cones, right? We would rather go right down the street, but we can't for some reason because they're directing us in a different way. Well, I would call that sin in our lives. Sin in our lives will actually redirect us than where Jesus is actually calling us, where Jesus wants us to be. I'm going to use the class of 72 here um, because uh, my friend Debbie that I've known for years too, uh, she's a, at our parish and all that stuff, and she gave me a little background on this, on this group. But let's apply this in our own lives. She said the reason we're, we're coming together as a union, not just our 50th year, but they're reminding themselves that the community is still together 50 years later that they're still out there feeding a sick classmate in the hospital. They're still giving up their sick days to, to help a person maybe suffering from cancer. They're paying for a friend to get medical help there. They're bringing someone to go to a better nursing home. One person even bought a dog for a classmate who was lonely. The class is so close that one person, I don't know who it is, but I don't want to know who it is, but nobody wants, but they're making sure that they can all be together this weekend, taking care of uh, whatever is needed so everybody could be together. And they still meet with regularly. Do we have people in our lives like that? Not just our families, right? Not just our families, not just the ones we know and love or the ones that are supposed to love us. But I can also tell you and assure you, you all know too, that you know, even in our families there's a lot of dysfunction at times, isn't there? Isn't there? There's a lot of orange cones in that and in those relationships. So go back to our baptismal call. Go back to loving God and loving our neighbor. Because we are what? We are, we are receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit to get us on that path, to get us back on the path. God doesn't promise to take away our suffering, our trials and tribulations, but the Lord certainly does promise to be with us. And it may be directly, a direct involvement, or it may be an involvement through you and I, one way or another. Are there people in our lives? Is there somebody that we haven't been grateful for lately? I'd ask the, the, the children and the students, when's the last time we told mom and dad thank you? Mom and dad's work really hard. Even if we're mad at mom and dad today, you know, do we say thank you? Thank you. Parents, when have we thanked our husbands and wives? When is the last time, don't do it now because we'll probably get into a lot of <laughs> battles here. When's the last time you talked to your spouse and just said, you know what, after all these years, God bless, thank you, thank you. A simple word, a simple word of gratitude. The good, the bad, the ugly. We're still together and we're still walking together, aren't we? We're still together. Classmates, I hope you said that to each other this weekend. Have you said thank you to one another? Have you thank, thanked and remembered your parents and all those who've gone before us to give us the pathway? Have we thanked the Lord? Think about those moments in our lives where we could do a little bit better in that. Maybe it's something simple this week. Maybe it's just a simple going home tonight or on the way home, stopping and reflecting and thanking the person next to you. We all come to church, right? You all have your regular seats, right? I sit here on Sunday. This is where I always sat. I sat here from when the church got built, and that's where I'm going to stay, right? St. Patrick has a prayer, the, the great prayer of St. Patrick. Christ above me, below me, to the right, to the left, uh, beside me, when I sit, when I stand, right? The breastplate of St. Patrick. We know that. Well, when's the last time that you look to your left and look to your right and look behind you and you see the same faces every week, don't you? We see the same faces. Do you know your neighbor? Have you just said, good morning? I know we try to do that, but sometimes we forget to do that. I know as a priest, we have 9,400 families. I'm really good about recognizing faces. Even as we age, I still recognize faces. And as I age, right? I always like to say, just to think of me as billed in the younger years right now, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm really going to pay for that one, Michael. <laughs> but we know each other, but do we know each other? Hmm. We know each other, but do we know each other? It's good to be with one another each and every week, isn't it? But do we know maybe a little bit about what may be transpiring? in his life, or do we sit there next to someone and they said, oh, well, you get out in the car. Well, they didn't even say hello to me today. They didn't even say hello to me. But man, they always say hello to me when, or they always, or it's somebody who always calls or whatever, you ever have that situation? You haven't heard from them in a while, a year or two years? You know, it's good that we're still bonded together, but usually it's, um, hi, how are you doing? Oh, by the way, can I, oh, by the way, can you help or do something? That's that's good. We want to be there for people. But do we take advantage of that? 
or do we not receive it well either? See, it works both ways, doesn't it? It works both ways. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying because we, the leper may have been healed physically, but what he was really healed of was spiritually. Spiritually. And the one that received the Lord in faith, the one that is following the path that God wants him to be on, is the one that came back glorifying God. Glorifying God and saying, thank you. Thank you. And Jesus simply responds, your faith has saved you. Are we allowing our faith to save us? Are we allowing our faith to enter into the deeper relationship that Jesus calls with himself, but more importantly, with one another? Over this week, may those divisions and that dysfunction that we may have in lives or in a relationship be healed because we've done what? We are great, great, grateful. I'm grateful. I remember growing up and the arguments I had with my parents all the time, but I was, I'm very grateful. And maybe there are times I was very ungrateful. And I'm sure I was. You know, I was looking at the young family here. You have five boys, I think, five boys are the electors in the service today. Well, I grew up with four boys, you know. So, Mom, I'm praying for you, you know, with five, five young men, right? Think about that. You know, are we always grateful? Probably not. But do we take the time to appreciate it and say thank you, even if it's a little bit later than we anticipated? It's okay to say, you know, I really am grateful for having you in my life. I'm grateful for having Jesus Christ leading that way.